Hey guys, today we are going to talk about MTG Arena and the reaction from popular YouTubers. Now, the one reaction I did not expect was Wedge's reaction, Wedge from the Mana Source. Normally, he is very positive about, let's call it, Magic the Gathering, Wizard of the Coast incentives or promotional material. But he actually calls out one of their more popular streamers on Twitch. And this is very against the grain. Uh, extremely against the grain. So we'll go into that a little bit more. But let's cover Unsleeve Media versus Wedge one more time. Uh, there is a lack of female magic content creators. And this can be shown by Jessica Epiphan, Epiphan saying, oh, I'm excited for pre-release tonight. And this is just a photo. I do not believe she has a YouTube channel for magic. I do not believe she has her Twitter. She does magic very much. And so how much attention will this one photo from a female non-magic The Gathering content creator? If you had to take a guess, what two content creators and magic would jump at the opportunity to offer a platform to her? Well, first is, so I've dabbled in content, but after tonight, there's some fire lit that makes me want to make a lot more of it. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Good night. And at a pre-release tonight, again, I don't know who she is, but it is fascinating whenever you have a female tweeting about magic or subtly commenting about magic. Maybe they have done an altered card. They don't play magic, but they drew a pony on, you know, a land, and now it's the number one post on Reddit. I wish I was kidding about this type of stuff, but I am not. Then you always have two amplifiers. So if you ask, how is this uh, pony picture of a on a land, why is this the number one post on Reddit for MTG? And it's because of people like Wedge, and as we'll later find out, there's a second mystery figure that always jumps in. Wedge says, let's talk. Hi, Wedge. Obviously, Unsleeve Media finds this a little distasteful, Wedge being recently married and all. But uh, who's to criticize this? I mean, we definitely do need more females interested in magic. I think that is good for everybody. But it is fascinating that whenever a female tweets anything related to magic, somehow Wedge and, as we will find out, Tolarian are able to very quickly respond. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's awkward, right? Uh, I know Wedge was very critical of me. Uh, saying that, oh, hey, someone left me a really bad comment on your video and you posted it for five hours. Yeah, I have stuff to do, Wedge. I'm not on a computer all day. I, I go out and do stuff. So, Professor makes a play. <laughs> I mean, all right. So, here we have a female who may or may not play Magic. This is obviously her pr first pre-release. So, I mean, pre-release is super casual. This is not like a pro tour top eight female competitor. This is not even, uh, I think, a casual player. It's just someone who vaguely commented about magic. And we have Wedge jumping in, which I knew he would. But we also have Tularian Community College jumping in. And let's read what he says. Am I meant to be offended? I feel like I should be. Yeah, you totally should be. So much so that you ignore that lot altogether, which is the mana source, and come talk content with me. I mean, does Tolarian reach out to every dude who wants to be promoted or just certain people? Hmm. Was there a certain podcast with two females that uh, was pretty much on his channel every week, even though most people didn't like it? And they really should have had their own channel. It really made no sense why they were on his channel all the time outside of being uh, promoted. So essentially, um, 
I don't know. You take it with a grain of salt. Okay, now to the real news. Weds is saying Renard is a Hearthstone streamer who quit Magic because he got banned for blatantly cheating. Oh, wow, that's interesting. He's also one of the sponsored creators for MTG Arena Early Access event. What? Why? Hashtag MTG. Now, this is upsetting to Weds. Uh, MTG Arena is going to change the whole game. I'm going to make a video about Rudy and his model. Uh, there's a lot of... I met this random stranger today, and I was buying his Stomping Ground Expedition for, like... I forget how much it was. And we talked about Rudy. Uh, his friend actually is subscribed to Rudy's Patreon. Rudy is no different from Amazon Prime. You pay a monthly subscription. Amazon Prime, you pay a yearly subscription, and then you can buy products at a good price. So Rudy is not a local game store. He is more like Amazon Prime. So Magic Arena is actually very interesting because people can stream it. People can... When you stream, you have more personality than when you make a scripted video. And in the future, I think streaming will overtake video content. That will be the number one video content just because how long it is. Watch time is something YouTube likes a ton. And I bet you YouTube wants people to stream. But for Magic, what are you going to stream about? Like, a lot of you suggested I do an MTG finance stream. But, like, we would run out of topics after I say buy reserve list, sell standard, which is what Rudy does, of course. Um, and then we'll be over. The stream will be over. All right, button click. Done. Uh, fair play to Wedge for calling this out. L laugh out loud. More proof that Wizards of the Coast doesn't give a damn anymore. What an amazing job, Wizards of the Coast. So let me explain why people are getting offended. It's about gravy trains. This Hearthstone player is not a not related to Wedge in any capacity. Most Magic players, given that Wedge can vote for the Hall of Fame, are related even if they don't want to be. Hearthstone players don't give a blank about Wedge. They really don't. So when you ever you see someone who's very passive aggressive take an aggressive stance, you know something bad is coming. So I hope MTG, obviously I will be auto banned. I'm very worried about MTG Arena because I could be banned. As many of you may know, I pay a lot of money for mobile games. I do not want to pay any money into MTG Arena and then later find out my account's gone. Which is what happened to... Um, it's what happened to Unsleeve Media. Uh, it was very sad. Uh, I, I mean, that was the... That told me that I should not invest in MTG Arena. Maybe I'll play for fun, but I'm not going to spend thousands of dollars on it like I do on my, my other mobile games. Regardless, it is very, very strange that they are sponsoring a cheater. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I can't imagine too many other games wanting to. So for the silver soap case where everyone wins like $15,000 or something and they have three of the eight people or Hearthstone players, two of them people who actually quit Magic to do Hearthstone, Brian Kibler and Stanis Sikoff. I don't see what the point of having all three of them are is because if you just have one of them yeah that's great but if all your streamers are hearthstone players like isn't their audience exactly the same so like what additional benefits are you getting if you get all of them now hearthstone is a very very popular game far more popular than magic arena and i can see like okay let's sponsor some hearthstone players and try to get some of that traffic but i can't see why the whole platform has to be hearthstone players right like, um, very non-endemic. And when you're talking about branding and all this stuff, it's so fake. Like, the Tolarian and the Weds, and the, I would love a female content creator who actually plays Magic. You know, like, with a collection. You know how I have a collection and I have all these boxes from a long time ago and stuff? And I have all these reserve list cards? It's because I played and these are things that I couldn't light on fire because no one wanted them and now suddenly they're valuable. But I don't see that. I mean, I know there's probably female Magic players or Power 9 who are not engaged to serial cheaters like Alex Bacini. But anyway, I digressed. 
it's gotta be real. It cannot be fake. You can't have a bunch of Hearthstone players, some of them banned from Magic for cheating, pretend that they they enjoy the game. Um, that's not going to work. What you need is you need some young guns. You need some League of Legend people who who play Magic. You need some you need some celebrity power. I hate to say that, but you need someone who is famous outside of Magic and appeals to a wide demographic. You know who would be really good? Hunter Pence. World champion baseball player. He has a magic store in Houston. All counts says he's a great guy. And he would be a great ambassador because he is actually a magic player. You know who would not be good? A convicted cheater of Magic the Gathering, now playing Magic Arena. And I know I know a lot of you say, oh, he can't cheat. That's fine. Um, yeah. But if he could, he would. So not uh, good branding. Plus, let's say the dude becomes really popular and people type in his name. And the first thing that pops up when associated with Magic was he was suspended for 18 months for cheating. And then he played Hearthstone because he couldn't play Magic anymore. Which seems to be a trend for many people. Many cheaters seem to do this same path. And you know what? They actually are 10 times more successful Hearthstone than they are in Magic. I wonder why, right? You know there's trouble when Weds is disagreeing with the main Wizard of Coast channel. And more and more we see this. Uh, his Amazon... Like, people are afraid of Amazon. Why? Like, I'll make a video on Rudy. Rudy is basically Amazon, right? You pay a subscription, you get cheap stuff, and there's no local game store to go to. There's no F&M. It's not, not a WPN. Eventually, we're not going to have local game stores anymore. Like, that's just the true nature of e-commerce. Uh, you can either fight it or you can say, hey, this is what's going to happen. Let me prepare um, now, I'm not saying local game stores all have to go bankrupt. No, many of them will do very, very well. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.